Hi, I'm Tom Billington, founder of Billington Cybersecurity, and welcome to Federal Cyberbytes, sponsored by Cisco. This is an easily digestible series of interviews you will see, which will feature senior government and industry leaders. I'm very excited by this interview series. This week, we're discussing the new DOD data strategy with Dave Spurk, Chief Data Officer at the Department of Defense, and Michael Overstreet, a Senior Security Architect Manager with Cisco. Please tune in now to their important and groundbreaking insights. Thank you. Dave, what are your first year goals for the DOD data strategy? I, I, I think I'd capture the first year's goals as operationalizing uh, the strategy. At about four months in, um, we've made some significant progress in identifying actual things that we're going to do um, and then striking out and doing those. Um, what I'd say the most important thing up front, though, is, is building the team of data professionals in the department. We've spent a lot of time through the development of the strategy and then the initial stages of operationalization and ensuring that we have the community of interest right ensuring that we know the MILDEP chief data officers, Eileen Vadreen, Tom Sasala at Navy, uh, Dave Markowitz at the Army, and even the COCOM chief data officers um, have a say in the priorities that we set because they are a part of the solution that we'll be driving towards. So we've spent a significant amount of our time just ensuring that that connective tissue between the data leaders in the department is understood and ensuring that the CDO uh, council um, is leveraged and establishing the working groups inside there that can get after the hardest problems the department's having. As you implement the new DOD data strategy in its first 90 days, how are you coordinating with the MILDEP CDOs, the SOCOMs, other agencies, and our 5i partners? Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited to, to, to say that we've launched some um, new forums uh, so that we can prioritize and focus our time um, on the items that matter most in both the, uh, the boardroom, you know, the senior leader decision forums inside OSD and um, in the battle space in, in, in those environments that are important to the warfighters. Um, what we've been able to do is take that CDO council, uh, put up a big tent, bring the department's agencies, field activities, everybody underneath it but then still have and create smaller forums where we can uniquely focus on those challenges um, and successes of, of uh, the, the variety of decisions and, and efforts that need uh, to be empowered by data at Echelon. Um, we still have the small group forum with the MILDEP CDOs. Uh, just last week, we hosted the first ever COCOM uh, Chief Data Officer Gathering. Um, and in, in, in before that, uh, you mentioned the Five Eyes. Um, last week, we actually held the inaugural Five Eye Chief Data Officer uh, Conference. It was spectacular. We decided that we're going to continue uh, that gathering every 60 days and committed that when we can all travel, we will host um, those Five Eyes CDOs for an in-person gathering sometime in 2021. What are the DOD's greatest data security challenges? You know, I, I think, and, and, and I look forward uh, to my partner on this, um, responding to a portion of that question. Um, I think our, our biggest data security challenges right now is understanding um, as we comport to some of the open uh, data government um, um, standards uh, that we also appreciate the challenges of re-identification and the mosaic effect as we begin to aggregate data and data sets that previously were independent, um, we can start to bring together new and unique insights. Um, those insights are also opportunities for our near peer competitors to uh, target some of those same insights in us um, as we start aggregating what previously were unclassified data sets. And uh, as we start doing that, we really need to think about new frameworks uh, for protecting data that previously was unclassified, but because of some of the techniques that we can use today, 
might need to move into a quasi-classified world. In the DOD's vast remote workforce, what tools are provided to data stewards that help keep data secure? Tom, there are a couple of uh, really good tools that um, come to mind. And, and actually there are um, programs and um, opportunities to secure that data in multiple ways. Uh, the first is uh, an obvious tool, data loss prevention tools. Uh, but there's also ensuring that when remote users connect to the network and access the data, that we're, they're doing it in a secure manner, um, that the workloads or the applications that they're running are also um, doing that in a secure manner so that the data that they're accessing is uh, only the data that they need and not more. And then finally, as uh, other devices come on and off the network, we want to make sure that they're having the least privileged access as well and building out what we would call a, a program of zero trust. So you um, ensure that not only users, but uh, workloads or applications, as well as the devices on the network have the least privileged access. So you ensure the data integrity as it's um, accessed from the network or as it flows across the network. So those are some of the tools uh, that come to mind. Visibility also is big in that, understanding what's on the network, um, where the data is flowing from and to, um, and where the data resides on the network. Without visibility, you can't really defend too much. What are some of the techniques used by threat actors who attempt to gain access to DOD data? So in the recent weeks, uh, and by the time this recording is released, we'll, we'll have heard about some supply chain attacks uh, that some very sophisticated, advanced um, threat actors, nation states have, uh, have done or, or um, accomplished. Um, that's a good opportunity to, for our customers to stop and think about if they were impacted, where did they fail and how can they get better? Uh, but if you weren't affected or if the customer wasn't affected, it's an opportunity as well to think back on how could we make sure if we are affected, uh, how we recover and regain control of the network or the data within the network that is so important to the mission and, and moving, the, moving that mission forward. So that's one, one way, but I still go back to the things that are still top of mind um, beyond the, the supply chain attacks, because those are going to come and go. Um, they're very difficult to, to, to identify at first, but once we do, it seems to be widespread um, and we get our hands around it. But the inside insider threat is what I'm trying to say, or um, even some of the, the more um, phishing and social, net, social engineering aspects of uh, attacks that we see on a day-to-day -day basis are still very prevalent. They're not going away, and we need to be sure we are on top of our game to defend the network and the data against those.